If Wanda is a Jedi, does that make Agatha a Sith? This is my review of WandaVision Season 1. A. V. N. It's headphones nailed! What's up guys, welcome back to Headphones Neil Reviews, I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my review for WandaVision Season 1. So, I'm going to do this review a little bit differently just because I feel that the season was too uneven to do a regular episode from start, or a regular review from start to finish. So, my overall impressions was that the season was okay, but it didn't really give me much of a reason to not watch or to actually watch Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness Madness if I did not see most of the season. If I watched, for example, just the last three episodes, maybe four, um, that would be enough to watch the season. Um, because a lot of it felt a lot of the information in the episodes felt pretty repetitive in that we have Wanda having created this town to help her cope with the loss of vision by recreating him. Uh, from her memories and using her power of the Mind Stone, which, as we learned in the season, was um, dark magic or um, essentially magic that she is the ultimate controller of. So a lot of the information that we learn and the state of the universe is generally progressed well in the latter half of the season. The first half kinds of kind of sets it up, but can be some could have been really summarized in the first two episodes. And they could have kicked it off a lot more in the third episode, um, especially with the um, revelation of S.W.O.R.D. as a sister agency to S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, having them do more of that or even show that they have um, Vision's um, body and um, Wanda has his mind. So something along those lines and then progress from there. Um, but, but by the time we get to the point of Agatha revealing who she is, that that's kind of where the season really picks up. We have more interactions with um, Sword and what they're trying to do to stop her. While we have um, Jimmy and Darcy trying to, and um, Monica trying to stop them because they understand what um, Wanda's going through. And rather than try to neutralize her, they want to have her overcome her grief to let the town go and do it peacefully. So. All of that, so that's kind of why a lot of that stuff kind of felt uneven and kind of made, worked out towards the end of the season. But watching the last couple of episodes, episodes overall just worked better for me. Um, but the high point of the season for me and what I want, wanted to reveal a little bit more is that we learned that the reason uh, Wanda is so powerful and, that, and why she's Scarlet Witch in the comics is that she has a uh, innate understanding and ability and tie in with the dark forces from hell which are further explained in the dark force book um which is basically the book of sins a book of spells um kind, think of it kind of like the book of the damned from the mummy universe where it holds all of the it holds magic but magic from the dark places of the universe or in this case hell so, um, and that's kind of why she was able to merge with, it, or when she was being created um, in uh, Sokovia, Slovakia, uh, where she, or she and her brother got her powers. That's kind of why she was able to merge with it so well, is because she already had an in a um, ability and tie in with the dark forces. So essentially, all those scientists did was turn it on and activate her powers. So the reason she's more powerful than Agatha is because she has that innate understanding. She can um, tie in directly to that force, which makes her a Scarlet Witch because she's that she's the ideal pinnacle um, witch, and um, that's kind of where she gets her powers. And um, so that brings me into. Um, while watching the episode for the second time, it hit me that she is, and because of how things are said in the episode, is that she reminds me a lot of Anakin, that she, 
If Anakin had not turned to the dark side, he would have been the ultimate Jedi, the pinnacle of Force users and Force powers, but he was corrupted by the Emperor, and because he was unable to see the manipulations of the Emperor, that's how he fell to the dark side, and the Emperor was able to rise. Um, so in the final two episodes, we have Agatha trying to tempt uh, Wanda into giving her tempt Wanda into giving Agatha her powers and um, she says a line which reminded me a lot of Palpatine from episode 3 in that give me your powers and, and I'm paraphrasing but give me your powers and you'll be able to live with your family in peace which reminded me of Palpatine in episode 3 and telling Anakin that by becoming a Sith he can bring peace to the Empire and finally have the power to save Padme. So Agatha's speech there reminded me a lot of that. So overall a very felt like a very memory a mirroring scene there. And then um, with Agatha she, or with Wanda she replies in the I think I, no, I believe this was all in the final episode but um, she replies with um, something along the lines of basically no, and as you mentioned, I am the. I don't think she said that I am the Scarlet Witch, but as you mentioned, a witch who casts the runes, or if the witch catches, if a witch casts runes, then no other witch is able to use her, her power or their power. So that reminded me a lot of um, Episode Nine: Rise of Skywalker with the whole "I am all the Sith" and Rey replying with "I am all the Jedi." So Wanda essentially rises to the occasion, understands that Agatha is trying to seduce her into getting more power and spreading evil. So Wanda um, holds, uh, is able to not to fall to the dark side like Rey and defeat Agatha. So um, all in all, the season finale and the I think see, episode, or episode 8 and basically episode 9 work as good um, good lead-ins on their own into Doctor Strange 2, so I, that's why I kind of want to say that if you, all of the episodes of um, with uh, the Sword Agents and if they if it was the show had been done more from the Sword perspective in, in as far as um, them trying to break into Wanda's town and watching it from the TV show perspective, like. Kind of like we saw in the first two episodes, but if they had left those alone and then episodes, you know, three to maybe six were more from the sword perspective of them, of them trying to break in. And then we see various scenes of Agatha doing her stuff um, and then lead directly into the final episodes with um, Agatha, or Agatha and uh, Wanda's conversation about the Darkhold and more information there as well with tie-ins to Sh um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that will kind of would have worked out a little bit better um, and then have more and then close the episode rather than having a post credit scene of Wanda in the cabin and her Scarlet Witch form perusing the multiverse um, on her own I guess which for me I mean, it wasn't a bad scene, but it would have worked better if they had led more or had a reason to show her doing that. So, either they're gonna, either because it's a post credit scene that it's gonna, that's where Doctor Strange 2 is gonna lead off, or that's gonna be how, um, that's gonna be an important scene in the beginning of the film. Kind of like how we saw, um, uh, Captain America punching the punching bags at the start of Avengers, I guess. So, I don't know. It's gonna be. I'm for me. I'm not saying that in general it was a bad, I bad season or bad way of doing things. But for me, it doesn't. At the moment, it doesn't. With the information we have, it doesn't really give me a reason as to why this season would give me a reason to watch. Or there was no reason to watch this entire season aside from the past few episodes and then jump right into Doctor Strange 2. So until we watch the um, Doctor Strange 2, it's, um, it's hard to really get behind the season. Um, of course, I did like in by the end of season one of WandaVision that they did have the tie into the Darkhold book that we saw in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, as far as the power, but of course that requires having seen it and watching all of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. knowing that 
um, Ada used the novel to, or the book to create the framework and create life model decoys, and that Shield was looking for that novel, looking for the dark hold as well, and it was one of the failures of Nick Fury. So things like that stand out. If you have all that backstory in history, and if you did watch Agents of Shield, if you didn't see it at all, then or if you didn't get to a season, I think four or five, whenever they. Um, found it. It was one of those things that um, it requires research on the internet, and to me, that's one of those things where I don't really say if anything is good if you have to research stuff online to find out more about it. So, in the scope of the season, I guess it was okay, but you kind of want more that having just a brief explanation by Agatha that Agatha that the Dark Hold is essentially the um, ultimate book of magic and there's a chapter devoted to Wanda being the Scarlet Witch you kind of want more out of it I guess we'll have to that's why I'm kind of holding off judgment until we watch Doctor Strange 2 to see how they tie it all together with Marvel's history of tying stuff together I can see that or I have faith that they'll do a good job of it but this is one of those cases where Wanda Vision does not really stand on its own unless you've seen Age of Ultron um, and uh, um, Endgame and Infinity War and then you are expecting to see Doctor Strange 2 and if you've seen uh, and the only reason or the only way, the way that the post credit scene in Wanda Vision season finale makes sense is if you've seen um, Endgame and Infinity War and you know that Doctor Strange did the same thing while per perusing the multiverse and that it took a physical toll on him but with Wanda she was able to do it fully conscious with her eyes open so that shows how powerful her powers really are. Um, so that's all there is for that. Um, the one note that doesn't really have to do with anything is that I did appreciate the closing the post credit scene in that um, we the old panning over shot to the cabin that um, Wanda is staying in mimicked the Shining opening sequence. So I actually didn't cat pick up on that until my second viewing. So I was like, why does that look really familiar? So and it took after a bit, it finally hit me that that was the same opening sequence in Island to the Shining. So when you go back and rewatch the opening to the Shining, when um, with the, at the beginning of the film, you see that it's, it's kind of a nod to that. I don't know if it was on purpose or not, but it felt like it was. Um, the mid credit scene in the season finale really kind of only makes sense if you know that um, Nick Fury, I think, is with the Kree, or if you know that the Kree were introduced with um, um, Captain Marvel in, during that film, I believe. Um, so that was kind of weird. I'm not sure what to make of that as of yet. So I don't know if that's setting uh, where that scene is supposed to be set up or if that's going to be part of Doctor Strange 2 as well or maybe part of um, Black Panther 2 or how that's going to pay off. But we shall see. Um, so that's all there is for this particular review um, of WandaVision. So or WandaVision Season 1, so we'll see by the time Doctor Strange 2 comes out how that all pays off or how it all gets tied together. But, like I said, I mean, overall it was a good season, but I'm holding final judgment until I see that film to definitively say how it all works and how, um, in general, WandaVision feels as a bridge from the prior Marvel films into... Um, the upcoming phase four which this was supposed to be the launch of so that's all there is for this particular review so if you have any questions comments feedback or anything like that you can find me on twitter at patel n01 the website is patel n01.com for past episodes subscription links supporting the show and all of that good stuff and of course by supporting the show on patreon at patreon.com slash patel n01 you get um early access to upcoming con scheduled content um hot take reviews like i did for wandavision season one and coming to america uh bonus content um as post review updates for things that were not in the episode um, as a supporter of the show so like i said you can self support the show on patreon at patreon.com slash patel n01 but thanks for tuning into this particular review and until next time